Birders, so we are going to go um, talk a little bit about attracting birds to your yard and feeding birds. So in this segment of Nature Study and Day Camp, we're focus focusing on our feathery friends. Um, there are lots of different kinds of birds that will come into your yard, um, depending on where you live. I live up in the mountains, so I have a lot of woodpeckers. Um, and one thing I like to do is feed them suet. Uh, suet can be made of lard and peanut butter and bird seed, okay? But having lard suet out in the summer isn't really a good idea. It'll melt and it can also grow mold. So in summertime, if you want to make your own suet cakes, um, we are going to take gelatin or pectin and you bring it to a boil and it's going to get really gloopy like this. Okay? And then we'll add our bird seed to it. And lots of different kinds of birds also like fruit. So I'm going to put some dried cran raisins inside as well. And one more scoop of bird seed. And I'm going to mix it up really well. Okay. So, I'm going to get it out. Different birds like to eat different things, and when you're looking at birds, you can kind of tell what they like to eat depending on the shape of their beak. So, birds that like to eat nuts have big, thick, triangular shells. And then birds that like to eat seeds and insects, they're going to have um, longer, skinnier, pointier beaks. So if you think about a hummingbird, for instance, hummingbirds like to eat um, nectar. They drink lots of high-energy nectar. It's all sugar because they move so fast all the time. And because they're drinking nectar, they have really, really long skinny beaks. So we're going to push our suet mix down into a bottom of a cup. And then we're going to take a pencil and make a hole right in the middle. So it's going to look like this. Now when this dries, we're going to leave it sit out overnight. All we need to do is take some string, okay? push it all the way through, and you can have it tied to a stick and the suet cake will sit right on a stick and it makes a perch for the birds to sit on. Hey Scouts! So it's been a day in movie magic time and we have taken our sweet cake off of the cup and I have threaded some yarn through it and I'm just going to go ahead and put a stick right through the loop on the bottom so I can show you what it's going to look like when we're done. Okay. So here we go. So here's a sweet cake and the birds are able to perch on it and pick right at it. Hey Laurel Hill State Campers. Um, so we are going to talk about hummingbirds. Uh, hummingbirds are those teeny tiny little colorful birds. Um, in the email, we actually have a link that lets you identify different hummingbirds. So we're going to try to attract them to our yard. So this is a hummingbird feeder. It's a really simple one that I got from the Dollar Tree. Okay, So it screws in, to, to in place like this. And this is where we would put all of the hummingbird nectar. All right. So they drink from these little flowers and the water just filters right down in here. So, one of the things that's really important about taking care of hummingbirds in the summer is if you're going to put out um, nectar for them, one, do not put red dye in your nectar. They don't need it, and it's not good for the hummingbirds. And also, you need to take these down every week, especially while it's hot, and clean them because they do get mold. Um, mold will grow in there since they're sugar water. And 
it can be very harmful to the hummers. And we don't want that because we want to see them. So to make hummingbird nectar at home, you're going to need warm water and sugar, just table sugar. All right? So the recipe is one part sugar and four parts water. So it doesn't matter what you're usually using to measure, whether you're using, um, this is an eighth of a cup right here, as long as that ratio is the same. One part sugar and four parts warm water. I use warm water because warm water dissolves the sugar. So I'm just going to swish it around a little bit. Swish, swish, swish. Okay, and it's all dissolved, and I'm going to go ahead and pour it right in here. Now, I cannot put this outside until it cools down, so I will put it in the refrigerator for a little bit. And as soon as I put it outside, I'm sure the hummingbirds that hang around my house are going to be waiting for me. So, just, just like this. There we go. We have some fresh nectar that's still a little bit warm to attract our hummers. So, um, we are going to feed another species of bird. If you've ever seen a bright orange Boston Oriole, um, they love fruit. There are other songbirds that also don't eat as many seeds um, or insects that really enjoy fruit. So one thing we can do is just take an orange and cut it in half. You're going to need help with this if you're a younger scout. Okay. Cut our orange in half. And I have my plastic needle. I'm just going to use it to take a piece of string just like this. And I can hang this on a tree. I can hang it from my porch. Um, you can also take a halved orange and poke it right through a branch on a tree. Or you can put it in a suet cage, like the suet that we made earlier. Um, and Boston Orioles will come and they will enjoy this fruit. Hey Scouts! So, um, we looked at some bird nests so far, different types of bird nests. And we talked about providing them with some nourishment, with some food. Um, another thing that we can do to attract and keep birds in our yard is provide them with nesting material. So this bag right here is just a plastic net bag that we're going to recycle um, that was from oranges. All right. So I went out and we collected some moss or some dried moss and there's some dried grass and this is great, great nesting material that most birds are going to use to line the inside of their nest and we're going to pack it really thick no. in our bag. You can use a bigger bag, any kind of uh, mesh bag like this that you would get from lemons or limes, maybe onions. We're just going to pack it in there and you'll see that some bits and pieces are already starting to stick out. Okay. One thing we want to make sure we don't put in here are any pieces of cloth or string or human or dog hair. Um, those might seem like really comfortable things to us, but they can be really dangerous for birds, specifically hair and thread. Um, they can get tangled around their feet or around their neck. And we definitely wouldn't want to put anything harmful out there. Um, cotton, real cotton balls um, would be work, not synthetic ones. And also um, like fluff from cattails would be another good natural material. So I just have a big, big plastic needle and some more yarn. And I'm just going to crisscross through the top to chinch the bag shut. Okay. And I have this funny looking bag with grass hanging all throughout it. And I can hang it off my porch 
or I can hang it from a shrub or a low tree branch and birds are going to be able to come right up here and grab some ready-made nesting material um, to put their nests in, lay their eggs. Hey scouts, so we are going to recycle an old container, drink container, this one happens to be Mountain Dew, um, and we're going to make a bird feeder. So this is going to be a tube feeder and we're going to fill the seed on the inside. So if you have scissors um, or an X-Acto knife, something sharp, then you're going to need your parents to help you um, cut holes in the side. Um, something else that was very easy to use is a wood burning tool if you have one of these or maybe even a high burning hot glue gun. You definitely need adult help with this because they're very hot and you can get burned. Um, so all we do is we turn it on and we're just going to poke a hole right in and swirl it around and then we'll poke some holes right above it and we're going to go to the exact opposite side right here and make another big hole and I have three small holes above them. The big hole we're going to put a pencil in. Okay, so this will be a perch for the birds. You can use a dowel rod or you can use a stick. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and do it down below and we're gonna do it the opposite way. So one in here and then directly across, one over here. And we'll put our pencil through again. Okay, so it's gonna look just like this. All right. Now, to hang it up, we need holes in the top. So we'll put one hole on this side and one hole directly across from it. And I have my handy dandy plastic needle again. I'm gonna put my thread through it and I'm gonna thread right through the top holes. And this is what I'm going to use to hang my bird feeder. Okay. Now what we're going to do is use a funnel to fill our bird feeder tube up with seed. So, keep it in. And the seed that I'm using has a mix um, with grass seeds and also open sunflower seeds and closed sunflower seeds and some cracked corn. So it gives it a good variety for different species of birds. All right, so now that we are done filling, we're just going to screw the lid back on top and we can take our feeder outside and hang it from a tree branch or your porch. And the birds will be able to sit on the pencils and peck through the little tiny holes that we made for the feed. All right, I hope you guys see some cool birds. Hey, Scouters. So um, you can also, instead of buying suet cakes, instead of making them, you can buy them. Um, lots of times they come in, like for a dollar in this shape right here, this square, and they fit very nicely into little tiny cages. Um, this is also another suet feeder. Uh, this one, you could cut these squares apart. They also make suet balls um, that you would just stack, and these sorts of feeders just lift them up. So suet, if you live in the woods, is really good for attracting woodpeckers. And I get a lot of red belly sap suckers that come here every single day and fly right up there and I can watch them sitting in my living room and it is very enjoyable. My cat also really enjoys it as well. Also, someone who likes suet would be black bears. And if you guys look on the wooden siding of my house, uh, just a couple short months ago, in March, 
early March, late February, we had some black bears. It was a mom and four cubs. She would come to the house every day and when she realized she couldn't get into the chicken scraps or the garbage, they started taking our suet feeders. And I moved it up really high and he couldn't get to it. So the, one of the cubs tried climbing the house and he left some paw prints and he even left some claw marks. So if we talk about identifying, identifying animal tracks later, um, we'll see that bears have one, two, three, four, and then there should be a fifth toe. And then the, and this is their front paw. And there's a really good one left right over here too. These have been here for a couple months and just the way the house is with the rain, they're not washing away. So I have some souvenirs from some big furry friends. <laughs>